weapons, whether it's military weapons, that came from another solar system. They are the ones responsible, allegedly, for the maybe two hydrogen bombs about end up on Earth. They do the same thing. They start doing DNA manipulation in the primates evolving in Africa. And two million years later, here we are talking through a digital world, hypothesizing about what could be behind the present, what we have is present evidence of advanced aerial craft that our own Department of Defense says are advanced aerial threats, and the word foreign adversaries are being used in the 180 day countdown. And are we now being maybe positioned to hear words that would be coming from officials? that there may be something already in this system or they have advanced knowledge because they are working with extraterrestrial biological entities that help our human level try to understand what is going on. I do not personally think that there is a threat, an imminent threat to the Earth. There are too many whistleblowers who have talked about how our military is working with ETs in interstellar trade, going into other systems in the Milky Way galaxy, and I think it's true. So that would mean that we have collaboration with highly advanced other intelligences that can move point to point. They're not moving in Euclidean geometry, they're moving point to point. So as long as we have collaboration with advanced intelligences that can help us, then I think that maybe the foreign adversaries and advanced aerial threats, those words that are being used in the anticipation of the 180-day countdown, Certainly, they were, are catching people's attention, those words. And threats always get more funding and congressional support than non-threats. And we're in a waiting room. Who will speak first? And how will they flesh out what we've been hearing piece by piece by piece? The latest uh, possible news is there have been rumblings that some people with first-hand knowledge have been approached to speak at the, the so-called countdown about some of the things that they know and that they have been pushing back. And that would indicate, if this is true, that not everybody is on the same square about what to do and what to say in this first round. But you guys, if we get official, official confirmation, that's what we need, from authorities. Yes, we are not alone in this universe. Yes, we have allies. Yes, we are going to start unfolding more for you. And we could move into an exciting 21st century, not built on lies, but finally on truth, no matter how uncomfortable some of the things that our government has done to keep it all a big secret since World War II. It's way past time to tell us the truth and to let us know who are our allies, who are hostile, who are neutral, which is exactly what the remote viewers were doing at the end of the uh, 80s. And we have a whole new platform for discussion, education, all everybody evolving together finally. So I hope that's how this goes. I hope this is where it is headed. But you guys also know that Wednesday nights here at the Earth Files YouTube channel, we're going to be 
continuing to talk through the, the military whistleblowers, intel whistleblowers, the abductees, and the people who have first-hand knowledge that relates to this as long as we can. So, either way, let's keep this going. Let's keep this energy that we are moving forward, finally, in some truth against centuries of lies. Okay, Ian, what about another question? Well, this is just echoing the comments that you've just made, really, because uh, people are saying if it was only the evil races or the malevolent races interfering with us, we'd probably be completely enslaved or dead by now. So it obviously is a, uh, a struggle between the malevolent and the uh, benevolent races as well. So I just wanted to add that to, to what, uh, what's been discussed in the chat. Also, moving on, uh, with the Tyler references, the pyramids, etc. Linda, how many different ways do you think the power spots on Earth are used? I have always thought from many sources that understanding the, the energy grids on this planet or any planet, that ETs analyze with spherical geometry anything that they come to and they are looking for what kind of is there going to be, are there going to be magnetic fields because there is an iron molten core or not? Uh, are there going to be large spaces that have developed inside the interiors of planets and moons that the non-humans who know how to do this can access quite rapidly and create places that are inside, like ready-made uh, underground places for protection and then using those areas to launch off in their exploration until they have settled on a planet that they look at as a laboratory and then experiment for millions of years as apparently this Earth has been done. So the energy systems in our planet, we have that huge, gigantic crystal iron core that is slowly rotating in this liquid of iron and some nickel, sets up the magnetic fields, also makes our planet unstable in the sense that volcanism has played a huge role in the planet. We are still an active planet with potential huge volcanoes that could erupt. But the magnetic fields then give operational ability for advanced intelligences who know how to use magnetic fields and other aspects for uh, building neutralizing gravity machines and invisibility, all of the things that are happening on this planet. That's what these advanced civilizations can do. And it's how they can be invisible in as many skies as they want to be invisible and still be interacting with surface populations on any planet or moon. And that's what has happened on Earth. And we have been kept out of the equation for the most part outside of, there have been spiritual categories, there have been folklore categories, there have been mythology categories of high strangeness going back as long as humans began to write uh, in stone or clay. Working with the phenomena that we know today, that the grays, the blondes, the reptilians, all of them, they can be in a room and they can project uh, this invisibility frequency, observe us, be around us, and we don't know or they project themselves as something with wings. So we are beginning, I think, as a global population to catch up to the fact that we're on a planet that is alive, it is vital, it is unstable, but it has all the ingredients for why pyramids, obelisks, and the structures that advanced intelligences knew how to build on what magnetic field lines 
in order to have a power grid, the Tesla said that we should be able to be on a planet where there was, would be energy at all times to everyone everywhere if we were tapping in to the magnetic fields and electrostatic energies with the kind of equipment that he was building. And there's got to be something about Tesla that had to be pointing in the right direction, or the FBI would not have been ordered to go in to where he lived in New York, and they must have been monitoring him because of the rapid entry by federal forces to get a clean sweep where he lived and where he died because they wanted his patent. And Tesla's patents are one of the most valuable things, apparently, to a lot of people who would like to have access and be able to build these energy grids and do it, I suppose, in secret. But we are still in a capitalist mind where everything has to be done for profit. Uh, and the idea of a planet that had the ability that everybody anywhere at any time had access to all the energy that they needed. But that is a concept that we have to evolve and finally reach a new level on this planet, which is my prayer every day, that humans get past tribalism. If it is the bad blondes, bad reptilians who have, are trying to keep us at war with each other, it's another reason to defy them to really defy them and go out every day and breathe in sun and know peace and love and approach everyone that way. And then, can you imagine what it would be like if we finally had friendly relations with grays, the artificial, we'll call them uh, their AI, uh, that can do so many things and that we'd end up on a planet where we would, could have trade with their AI and they could have trade maybe for, maybe for the protein that they, some of them take in the animal mutilation. So I think if you, if you get past the idea that there has been a lot of evidence of perhaps violence in our past and Mars and that we are in a different century and our government is already peacefully working with some collaborators on interstellar trade routes and that's the direction to concentrate on. The future then isn't scary. The future is exciting and that maybe we will be in the halls of the cosmos. Homo sapiens sapiens from Earth use as an example that you could take a primate on a laboratory planet, mix and match certain genes, and end up with an evolutionary creature that eventually the divine field itself would insert souls that even the E.T., as Terry Lovelace said, the E.T.s would like to have a human soul, and they can't. And if we can learn what it is about the relationship between the divine field behind this huge cut and him, who have been abused in many different ways. Maybe, maybe it's that. Maybe it's just breaking through consciousness in humanity that reaches out into the universe and we become an example of something, something extraordinary. The divine field working through a genetically created a manipulated consciousness. So I'll opt for that path in the timeline. <laughs>
Oh, they're saying it's a bit out of sync and we never know why this happens. Do we want to restart? Is there, can I get feedback from you guys? I have no idea because I don't know that I'm out of sync. Tell me if I should keep going and, or should we stop and try? Ian, what are you getting? Um, I'm just checking into this uh, into the chat at the moment. So I'm uh, I'm not seeing anyone say to restart or anything like that. Um, you're always there's always a little bit of a delay here for me. Okay. But uh, no, everything is fine. Keep going. Okay, right. here I think. Okay. To, to let's right. keep going, Linda. All right, and for any of you all out there in all the countries in the world, I'm getting a lot of letters from physicists, from engineers. Uh, if any of you can tell us, why does YouTube intermittently go in and out of sync? We try to do every single thing possible to prevent it, but it isn't just us. It is a, uh, something that seems to happen periodically uh, with YouTube. I would love to hear from those of you who really do know the science of what's happening in YouTube around the world. Why does it go out of sync sometimes and some programs stay beautifully in? It's very frustrating because we try so hard uh, to have everything work as well as we can. Well, let's go on to another question. And if I'm slightly out of sync, just pretend I'm in another dimension, but that we're communicating. OK, Linda. Uh Okay, we're going to go to a question on cattle mutilations now. Uh, there's some speculation about whether or not cattle mutilations are um, being done. The harvesting of cattle blood and tissue is to repair ET's genetic defects. And do you know any sources who have said that the ET is genetically deficient and hence they abduct humans and do the cattle mutilations to harvest tissue and blood for this reason? I think that Terry Lovelace is a keen insight. Um, he's probably one of the few, maybe the only abductee who has had the gray Betty physically talk to him a little bit. And he has gotten very clear images about the mutilations as being done by the reptilian. And that fits also into um, some of the Tyler interview and it also fits in to the cases that I was investigating in Colorado when I was doing a strange harvest and that after the first broadcast on May 25th of 1980 I began being just overwhelmed with phone calls and mail and I do remember because it had always been puzzling to me and some of the law enforcement that I had talked about in some depth. If the mutilators are the creatures from outer space, as Sheriff Tex Graves said, which ones are they? Because even back then there were these descriptions. Some people said that they saw small gray bodies. Uh, there were two cowboys, I got this in the newspaper someplace going all the way back to 1976, and two cowboys out in a ranch said that they saw two small gray, they thought they would look like little kids, rise straight up in the air and come right over the fence post of a corral, totally in control, and came down slowly into the corral and the cowboys were scared. They did not know what they were watching. They admitted it. They said, we ran back to the ranch house to talk with people there. What could this be? They went up in the air and they came down into the corral. So if those were, let's say those are the gray androids. There is a case, the Cimarron case, where a mother and her boy are driving. They hear a cow screaming when they see a silver disc in the sky. They hear the cow screaming. The mother stops, pulls the car over, and in the hypnosis that she did with uh, Leo Sprinkle long ago, 
the suggestion was that they were blonde looking humans. Then there are the cases where I work with a, a two psychometrists. One was in Canada and one was in working for Adams State College in Southern Colorado. And I had a piece of hide that had glowed right between the two eyes on a horse. And this was in the month after my broadcast. And it was a uh, interview that was done in Colorado Springs with a rancher who said, whoever has mutilated my horse has done embalmed him. And by the time I got to the horse, the horse had been there for three weeks. And with God as my witness, I walk with the rancher to the horse expecting to see the disintegration that usually begins to set in between uh, after maggots and things and what. And this horse looked like it should get up and had these very neat rectangles of tissue, like three inches, two inches, one inch, three quarters, half inch, we measured. So they went in these diminishing lines, going from the horse's penis and testicles going across the sex organ in the testicles with these strange rectangular thin pieces of tissue removed. The rectum had been removed. And at, uh, uh, I was working with some uh, science people between New Mexico and Colorado. They said, take black light, get, get some black light frequencies. And I got somebody to help me. And we stayed out there around this horse that looked like it should get these totally bloodless, very nice excisions.